اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان ولمن خاف مقام ربه جنتان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان ذواتا افنان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما عينان تجريان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما من كل فاكهه زوجان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان متكئين على فروش بطائنها من استبرق وجن الجنتين دان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان فيهن قاصرات الطرف لم يطمثهن انس قبلهم ولا جان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان كانهن الياقوت والمرجان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان هل جزاء الاحسان الا الاحسان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان ومن دونهما جنتان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان مدهمتان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما عينان نضاختان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما فاكهه ونخل ورمان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان فيهن خيرات حسان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان حور مقصورات في الخيام فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان لم يطمثهن انس قبلهم ولا جان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان متكئين على رفرف خضر وعبقري حسان فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان تبارك اسم ربك ذي الجلال والاكرام صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله واشهد ان لا اله الا الله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري 
وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him and we thank him and we ask him for help and guidance He who is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be taken astray by anyone And he who is allowed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be misguided Cannot and will not be brought back to guidance by anyone on the face of this earth I bear witness that there is no deity to be worshipped but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his last messenger sent as a true guidance to humankind so that we could follow his example at all times, all places and under all circumstances. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It has been indeed a very long journey. I remember that I started this journey as a free entity that was created with many, many, many other entities and the Creator called each one of us Ruh and he kept us in a place that was called Alam al-Dharr, the place of scattering. And then I kept noticing that all the time one of us was being taken by an angel to start this journey. When my turn came, I was taken by this angel and I was brought into a very confined place and something happened that united me with something that looked different and I was made to dwell in that place that kept on growing but I was more confined now I couldn't move as I used to and I was made to accept that there was no other way around it and that so-called body kept growing until a time came when the Almighty God, the Creator, gave His permission for me, and now the new me was not the Ruh that I was, but it was the body and the Ruh because the Almighty decreed that both of us now are one. And he willed that we leave this confined place into a new environment. And it wasn't an easy transition within this journey. And I remember as I made that transition, I cried. It wasn't easy. I felt a certain kind of pain and I noticed that as I was crying everyone around me was smiling and laughing and I didn't quite understand what's going on everything around me was different and I started to feel a special attachment to another body and soul to another person I was so attached to her and I remember that I used to hear her heart in that confined place and I used to feel so secure when she would hug me when she would feed me when she would look after me and I started to grow 
and I started to discover new things around me. And when I started to realize what some things were, and my mother started to help me to see and meet other people, first I discovered another person who also loved me so much, and he was my father. And I found that there were others that I called brothers and sisters, and together we were a family, and together we started to learn how to live in this environment that at times was easy and enjoyable, at times it wasn't. And I remember there were certain times when I felt uncomfortable, and my mother was worried about me, and I didn't know why other than that I was uncomfortable. I was sick at times. At times I was just bubbling with energy and when I reached a certain age, I was taught to be careful not to follow someone I couldn't see. I was told that this was Satan and that Satan will try very hard along this journey to take me to places I wasn't supposed to go to. And I was told at the same time that the best safeguard is a book that was sent to a man that started his journey much earlier than me. And I was told his name was Muhammad. I was told that every time I mention his name, I should say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was taught that he was a messenger from the one who created all of us, the humans and the jinn. I was also taught that if I read this book and study it and go by it, my journey will be a very pleasant one. And I was also told about those whose journey was not good, was difficult and tough because they did not go by that book. And I was told that it was called the Quran and I was being taught by my parents, by my teachers, by lots of things around me and I started to grow. And at times I felt weak and at times I felt that the noise of Satan was so much that at times I felt that he was dragging me into those places, but I resisted. I resisted very hard. And at times I felt so good when I kept going to a place that they called the masjid. And I saw many other people who realized the importance of being together. We were called Muslims. And I felt so happy with this name and this identity and I continued and I started to feel that it is time to share what I learned with another family. I got married and I started to have the authority that my father and my mother had and I shared that with my wife and we had the children that started their journey later than I did later than my father did, and I started to discover that this journey is ongoing and that those souls in Alam al dharr are going to unite with those bodies. And we had the children, and I started to teach them with my wife, and they started to grow. And then I remember now, in retrospect, because I got to a point where I lost something that they kept calling time. All of a sudden, time was not with me. All of a sudden, I felt that the journey started to take a very sharp turn. And I found myself with something lifted from in front of me and there were angels. I remember that after a very brief, difficult encounter when that sharp turn took place, things started to become easy. And I was taken by those angels and there was one of them that 
appeared to do something very, very special. He helped my, or not my, because for some time I became used to me being the soul and the body, and now the me was the soul again because that special angel took that me again and that body that I got so used to for that time that now all of a sudden seems to be so short was taken and I noticed that it was lying still and I noticed that there were people around me crying they seemed to be upset, but for some reason, I was happy. The only thing that made me a little bit dampen that happiness was the fact that I couldn't anymore communicate with those people I love so much. I couldn't talk to them. I could see them crying, but I couldn't comfort them to tell them that I was fine. And it was time for me to go after I made a very special visit. I was taken so quickly. And I was told that you will be passing by the kingdom of the divine. And then after that you will come back. And I made that. I remember so quickly and I came back in time for me to witness that those people who really were crying were taking my body and then they took it and I saw that there was a hole where they took that body, lowered it in that hole and then I was reunited again with that body and the earth was put on top of that body and then soon I was visited by two angels that really looked a little bit tough. They started to ask me questions, but thank God. I felt that I was able to answer every question and then something very pleasant happened. I was made to look to my right and I saw a window that showed me a very pleasant place because before that I was made to look to my left and I saw a very scary thing on that window on the left but it was very quickly closed and that window to the right was made open more and I looked but then it was closed. And I was told that there you will be living after you finish your journey. Because there was a still some lapse you have to continue in. And I did. And I found that it was very brief. But later people told me that, oh no, it was a long, long time that you were dead. They told me I was dead. They thought that I was finished, but I wasn't. I was in the company of all those who died before me. And then it was time when all those souls had made their journey and they all died and we were made to rise. And then we had to wait and wait. But we could see that there were many who were so comfortable and enjoying a certain shadow that later we knew was the shadow that was cast by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet there were others who were suffering and I don't even want to remember their suffering. It was so much, but they were told how to avoid that, but they listened to Satan. Alhamdulillah, praise be to God that I wasn't among those. At least I was wishing for that. I tried my very best. And in retrospect, I am now thinking in that retrospect. And I'm hoping that it is me. But in time, I don't know. 
whether I was there or I wasn't, but I am still now feeling with a wishful thinking that yes, I was in that shadow. And then after some time we started to really move with angels who took us to groups and groups and groups. I was placed in a group and I was told that there is a leader for that group who is the same Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that I never met when I was still in that lapse of the journey that was called dunya. And I could see him. I could really feel that I just want to go and hug him. And I remember that it was a very pleasant encounter because he gave me a drink. And I felt that the thirst I used to experience in dunya, especially when I used to be fasting, is not there. It's gone. And then we stood and one by one, one by one, we started to go. And then we had that encounter with the Almighty. We could see a certain feeling, but we couldn't see anything that we used to experience in dunya. It was a different kind of of, of seeing and experiencing, but we were communicated to, and I was given something with my right hand, and I looked at it, and it was something good. But I looked at it, and I said, perhaps this is not me, because there are so many things in it that I don't remember ever I have done and I was told that no, there were many things that people kept adding to this record while you were not aware of because of the little things that you did here and there and there and it was added to your book of record. And then I was told that you are going to now end your journey in a place called Jannah. And I was ushered into a place where I had to go and walk and I was told that this is called as sirat al-mustaqim and you are going to pass over something. Make sure that you are not scared because underneath that path is a place that you remember was called the hellfire and it's a pit that is so terrifying that there will be people who will fall into it. I still, even after I took that book in my right hand, I still had suspicion within me that I may be the one who will fall into that. But as I passed on it, I felt that I was so quick that I passed over it as fast as the wind. And now I arrived at a place that was open and I was ushered into that place. I got there and it is Jannah. It is Jannah. This is the end of the journey. And this is the place that we spent a long, 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 long journey just to get there and stay there and enjoy and be with all those that we love. There will be no death anymore that will make us leave each other. I got reunited with my children. I got reunited with my wife. And we saw our parents. We saw all the people we loved. And the space was not a problem anymore. I could see things that now I can't talk about because I'm still seeing them in retrospect. I found that space was not a problem anymore at all, that we could all be together and we could really see each other. And even though in this dunya, we will be separated within a space that I cannot reach the person at the end of this hall unless I will go to him or he will go to me. In Jannah, no, I could see and enjoy everyone without space being a problem. Time was not a problem. I didn't feel that I needed to sleep. Actually, as I entered Jannah, I don't ever remember that I slept because I was told that people of Jannah do not sleep. They just enjoy. I was told that people of Jannah eat, but they don't need to get rid of any waste. I was told that things are so different. I was, or I discovered, 
that all the things I experienced in dunya were experiences that were just samples of what the real things are. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. I discovered that all the things in dunya were just samples of the reality of akhirah. So the true existence is that of akhirah, of jannah. Or might God have had the mercy over those who rejected the Quran to avoid the reality of the hellfire. But we still ask that God Almighty will have mercy on them and will make them at certain at certain lapses go to Jannah. Brothers and sisters, let me share with you the Hadith Al-Qudsi that was reported.